All right. Uh, welcome back. And uh, hi. And hello. And stuff like that. Um, this is Harry Potter Abridged, as you well know. And we are on to the uh, the second novel in the series. Um, I will no longer have to uh, change the book title to the uh, British or English uh, uh, version because from here on out the uh, the titles remain the same. Uh, so this is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And so, yeah, that's where we are right now. We are, uh, we're starting that one. That's what we're doing. Um, and chapter one in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is entitled The Worst Birthday. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um... It's a reasonably short chapter. We'll see how the episode follows in regards to that, in relation to that, perhaps, is the better way to say it. Um, I checked out the uh, the first scene of the movie. Uh, as I had sort of suspected, for the most part, the movie glosses over most of this chapter in like a matter of a couple of minutes or maybe three minutes, probably no more than five tops. Uh so yeah <coughs> it's definitely um there's a lot of uh and I, I i can't remember for sure now but i know that especially in the first few books oh uh, well obviously not in the very first one because the first one just is is pretty much prologue in the first chapter but uh, during the first chapter, and even in some of the first few chapters of of the uh, uh, subsequent book, starting with book two, there's a little bit of rehash, a little bit of just in case you didn't read the last book last week or something. Uh, here's just a few reminders about some things that you might have already known, but maybe you forgot about. Um, you know, whereas like other series, you know, just assume that if you forgot you forgot and hopefully you can figure it out um but you know the series is aimed at at a younger audience and and that's not a bad you know they maybe they didn't read the other book last week although we all know that there's a lot of binge reading going on these days but (coughs) she didn't know that's what it was going to be like when she was writing it so there's that I mean, and it's not that it's bad it's just it it is what my point being is it's not a very long chapter and it rehashes information from the uh, first book. So not a ton of, of, of uh, new things, but there are, you know, the story does get started nonetheless. So right to that end. Um, on this, uh, the worst birthday, uh, it, it mentions that uh, an argument has broken out over breakfast. Um so Harry is uh, is back from his first year at Hogwarts, and you know it's a it's a different environment in the in the Dursley household. Um, Harry's still the least liked person, and 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 is still treated pretty much like shit. Um, it's just that <coughs> in this particular case, uh, now that he's gone away now now that everybody knows that he's a wizard and that he can do magic um there's there he's still looked down upon but there is a, a certain element of fear um um like 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 he's a bomb waiting to go off a loose cannon whatever um i mean i guess well they already knew that it was likely he had these powers but they uh had pretty much agreed to never tell him about it not knowing although how could petunia not know that harry was going to get a letter she knows all about the letters maybe that part hadn't quite occurred to uh rolling yet in this situation but it's in fact the whole thing about letters later on that that petunia knows that 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 lily got a letter and she knows 
that she wanted to get one, even though she ended up calling Lily a freak, which, by the way, uh, comes up later in this chapter from Dudley. Anyway, um, uh, right, um, so it's mentioned, uh, this argument is it because, uh, of Hedwig. Now, now that Harry's been to Hogwarts, he got a, uh, a pet, um, actually not at Hogwarts, but, but in, in Diagon Alley, Hagrid actually bought ha Harry his, uh, his pet owl, which is only fitting that, that, you know, Hagrid being the, uh, the lover of all living creatures in the magical world, um, the, the gamekeeper and, and the, uh, the one with the monster fancy, although Hedwig is not a monster, but anyway, he, he's, he's, he's the animal guy, and so he gets Harry his animal, um, and Hedwig is, well, I mean, Hedwig is, 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 well, it's not, I wanted to say it's like Harry's ghost, but, and not literal ghost, I'm making a Song of Ice and Fire reference, you already knew that. Um, Hedwig is white, I don't think Hedwig has red eyes, so there's that. But also, Hedwig, during the school year, uh, Hedwig lives pretty much in the Owlry, like, not around Harry, uh, but that's not really what it, th their relationship is about when they're at Privet Drive together. Um, because in those moments, and those aren't moments, in those lo long stretches between school years, um, Hedwig is literally his only connection to the magical world, not only in physical presence, but also uh, in the ability to send and receive messages. Um, However, we will learn soon that uh, uh, not yet, not not yet on that second part. Um, but anyway, it, it it Hedwig is definitely a, a true companion pet, not not just you know a, a letter carrier. Um, it's just that during the school year, which is <clears throat> a significant chunk of the year, um, Harry's interactions with Hedwig are pretty limited to when he's sending and receiving. Uh, you know, letters, but you know, all the same, like I said, it, it's, that's not what it, the, their relationship is. Okay. I'm repeating myself. Great. Um, preparations, uh, uh, did take place off camera as they often have to do these days, unfortunately. Um, even though not always, cause you know, circumstances change, but it's all good. We're, we're having fun regardless. Uh, but in this case, yes, is the answer. <coughs> anyway, and, and Harry's like, um, you know, well, she's bored. You know, she did, she's used to being able to fly if I could just let her out at night. And, of course, you know, Vernon's having none of it. Um, he's... <sighs> It, the, the the level of intolerance the, within the family of, of Harry's whole situation is pretty about as high as it could possibly be. Um, anyway, uh, and of course, Uncle Vernon even says, do I look stupid? Which, of course, he probably does. But oh, And of course, it even we get the, uh, the image of a, a little miny... My, miny? Hmm... What word was I combining with tiny in my head to come up with miny? Mini, maybe? Yeah, mini food description, or a tiny food description. Yes, I, I think that's what happened. Um, what, you've never made words when you say two words at the same time before your brain can decide which one's better? Well, I'm sorry for you. Um... <laughs> Anyway, oh yes, the, our 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 mini food description. <laughs> yes, because why not? Uh, hashtag mini. Um, we see that there's a bit of fried egg dangling from uh, Vernon's mustache. So yes, in fact, he does look stupid. Um, but what he means is is that he he suspects what will happen when when Hedwig is let out, and. Um, 
Anyway, uh, so, and that's another uh, thing, like, why don't they expect the letter? Because the fact that he's exchanging a dark look with Petunia after that bit about what's going to happen if the owl's let out, that indicates that they know something about how messages are sent and received in the wizarding world. Which means that Petunia maybe at some point mentioned that, that something about an owl and a message. I, yeah, because Vernon's scared of owls in the first chapter of the first book. Not scared of, but he thinks it's odd that they're about everywhere. Does that does that mean that he knew then? You know, I never, I didn't think so before, but now I wonder. Comment if you have ideas on that. I'm gonna prompt you. I like your comments. You guys think of things that I don't always think of, and it's good. So please, please don't stop doing that. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying anybody's stopping. I'm just making a point to remind you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, and Harry's trying to uh, argue back, but in the midst of that, Dudley's shouting for more bacon. Um... Petunia's concerned about Dudley eating enough at school. Vernon assures her it won't be a problem at this uh, new school smeltings. Well, it's his, I guess this is his second year. Right, right, right. He got the smelting stick last year. Right. That's when Harry goes to Hogwarts. Right, 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 right. Um, see, sometimes you forget things, even if you just read the last book. Sometimes you have to think for a second. <clears throat> And, of course, Vernon has to mention that he uh, he obviously got enough to eat when he went to smell things. Well, since we know that, that Vernon and Dudley are both uh, rather large, as it were, um, we know that we, we, well, we're supposed to be uh, made to think that they haven't missed any meals and maybe got a couple of extras in. Um, which... Uh, in a discussion not too long ago with someone, um, the point was made that in throughout the series, for the most part, uh, every character that's overweight is kind of a bad person, like like you know the the ugly people in A Song of Ice and Fire, um, or as. Uh, 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 Swift was saying in the last episode, um, uh, in the most recent episode, uh, uh, about characters with black eyes. Although then somebody made the point that Hagrid uh, has beetle black eyes and is obviously the opposite of a bad character. Um, anyway, uh, I do see the 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 point that was being made that. Um, it's kind of uh well i suppose not kind of but but it, it essentially is like fat shaming however i will say cuz i had to make a point i mean well i wouldn't if i didn't feel this way obviously i'm not just making saying it to to, to play devil's advocate or anything here um <coughs> i i think that at least in the case of of vernon and dudley uh the theme of, of excess, um, in contrast to Harry's, uh, measly everything, um, is, is the point. Um, not to say that being fat means that you're a bad person. Um, but I could see how it may read that way to some people. I totally can. I'm not even denying it. I just think that my, well, I'm just saying that my opinion with regards to these two characters, um, Slughorn is also huge. Um, obviously, Slughorn has uh, 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 many a character flaw. I don't. I wouldn't call him a bad guy because he ends up making like the right decisions in the end. Um, and while he does do things as a character for maybe like the wrong reasons, it's not like most of the time they're horrible reasons 
And in, with regards to the Tom Riddle thing, I mean, he really didn't know. He really didn't know, and, he, and it haunted him. I mean, enough to where he, 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 he wanted to hide that memory. So, yeah, Slughorn, deeply flawed. Evil, bad, I don't, I can't say that, no. And his theme is excess too. I mean, he like has all. He's a creature comforts guy, and and he he he, he like gets special sweets from like former students and shit. Um, it's his. I mean, and that's how he was even at Hogwarts. Like, okay, we're way way like some people. If if you, okay, most of you already have read this and you know who Slughorn is, but still, um, back to this book though. Slughorn's not for power from any books um he's in book six right yeah yeah yeah, totally um because i totally okay so that was a a, a, another correction from a, a previous episode i totally guessed three different books for the riddle house prologue chapter and was wrong about all of them <laughs> it's five right shit yeah, it has to be, because I just said that, that, that the other one is six, and I'm pretty positive about that, and I know what the beginning of seven is. Um, wait a minute, let's just do a review here. So the the first chapter is the boy, the first book is the boy who lived, the second is the worst birthday. Oh, I don't know what the first chapter of the third book is. Um... Nor the fourth off top. I don't... Wait. No, it's not the... Oh, Jesus. It's definitely the fifth, because how could it not be the fifth? Because Voldemort... Okay. Right. Anyway, right. Wait, so wait, is the other minister book seven? I could totally be looking this stuff up, but it's way more fun to guess while I'm recording. Um, and to let you guys laugh at the fact that I'm probably not getting it all right because I'm not looking it up. Like, I'm okay with that. Like, humor at my expense, not a problem. Not a problem. Right. Anyway, um, and you know what? Like I said, this is a short chapter, so I'm, I'm trying to uh, keep it fun and interesting for everyone. That's right. That's, that's what I'm, I'm here to help. Um, I am. I really, I really am. Okay. Anyway, uh, so yeah, Dudley had screamed that he was, or or yelled that he was hungry, which you know, back to our theme of of uh, you know needing and wanting more than is necessary. Which, by the way, was started by that whole freaking mound of presents the previous year when it was Dudley's birthday. Um. <clears throat> And, uh, anyway, so, yeah, Dudley asks, uh, Harry to pass the frying pan because he can't be bothered to get up and get his own, like, second or third helpings or who knows how many. Um, and Harry's, Harry's in kind of a glum mood, which isn't an unusual, uh, circumstance at the beginning of the books because Harry's generally at the Dursleys at the beginning of the books and there's no worse place for Harry to be than than at the Dursleys so he uh and and Harry's good at at uh at little bits of sarcasm and and he has good comebacks he's 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 been picked on his whole life and so he's he knows how to arm himself with words as best he can, and sometimes he just says shit just to be a kind of to be a dick, and like not that it's like the best choice, but he's twelve or about to be, um, so I'll give him a little a little bit of leeway here. Um, if you grow up in a household like that, you kind of need to be, you know. Anyway, right. And so Harry's like, you forgot the magic word. You know, just just not even... 
Actually, I should say the tone's probably not even like that. I don't know why I made it like that. The, the, the tone is more like, you forgot the magic word. Like, hmm, that's the tone. Um, and yet, and all he really, he, he's not even, you know, I, I just made I just made that whole point, and this is not even what this is, really. He's just, he's just being kind of, like, stupid, but he's not really, like... You know, shots are not fired. <laughs> um, anyway, but regardless of the tone, those are the words. And um, saying magic out loud was not in his best interest. And he wasn't thinking, because again, Harry's just kind of like, <laughs> which we'll learn very soon why. Um, I, I could, but it's in this chapter. Um, and so, yeah, everybody freaks the fuck out. Dudley falls um, out of his chair, which, you know, I if, at first, I like, when I saw some of the stuff in the movies, I mean, and there's still some things that are just stupid, but... There's more uh, uh, slapstick um, physical comedy in uh, in the books than than one might even realize unless you're really paying attention. Um, like in a movie, that would probably not even play right it, it, for Dudley to like literally fall out of his chair. This doesn't happen, by the way. Um, the movie starts with um, Harry reading, not reading. Uh, Harry looking at the uh, the picture book that Hagrid gave him with like his picture of his with the pictures of his parents and such, um, and that's when the theme shifts from the opening to one of the uh, uh, I don't know what that theme is called. I don't I don't I haven't actually ever owned the soundtrack and looked at the uh, at the at the titles. I know that the opening theme is Hedwig's theme. Um, but the, uh, oh shit, it was just in my head, and then I thought of Hedwig's theme, and it washed it out. Um, anyway, it's the fucking, uh, da, 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 oh, wait, no. It's some, something, anyway, whatever, John Williams. Which, by the way, um... After watching the uh, the first movie again um, in segments and kind of breaking it down chapter by chapter with the books, I like John Williams. He overscored the shit out of the first movie. Like it, it's 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 a lot, and especially towards the end, there's some parts I, I forgot to mention that in the last, which it's amazing because I mentioned a lot in the last episode of of the uh, first book. Um, This one I don't know yet about the whole book, but the uh, the opening was like better. It was a little less cheesy, even though it's the same theme. He just changed up the accompaniment behind it, and then like it gets darker. It's nice. It's 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 more refined so far. Granted, I mean I watched like five minutes or less of the movie because it doesn't take long to get to the end of this chapter in the movie. Um. And I don't even remember music during the opening scene. There might have been some, but it was very subdued, which is what it should be um, most of the time. There's there's a time and a place to pick it up. I mean, and don't get me wrong, John Williams usually knows, but I think that, that, that maybe he got a little carried away with Harry Potter the first time. We'll see how I feel about this one as we progress. Um... I suppose there's a point to that, too, but anyway... Right. So yeah, uh, uh, so Dudley <laughs> gasps and falls off, gasps and falls uh, off of his chair, um, with a crash that shakes the whole kitchen. Of course, because we have to be reminded of how heavy he is, um, and how shocked. I suppose at the same time, these two things together creating a serious impact. Um. And Petunia gasps. Uh, no, 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 no. She doesn't gasp. She she gives a small scream. 
<laughs> Something of that nature. And clapped her hands to her mouth. Um, and, and Vernon uh, jumps to his feet, you know, and immediately has the, uh, the vein throbbing in his temples. Um, that's what Vernon does. He, he purples and his, his veins throb. That's, that's, he goes from zero to vein throb in like less than a second. Like Porsches and Lamborghinis ain't got shit on Vernon Dursley getting pissed off. Space shuttles. Ain't got shit on Vernon. Okay. And he immediately yells, What have I told you? You know, thundering he does. Vernon thunders. And, of course, he's also spring spit all over the table. Because, you know, he can't... He doesn't thunder uh, uh, neatly. He thunders like a big fat guy. That's, 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 that is what we're sort of put in the uh, mind of, just by the way. And he's got the big bushy mustache, too. Um, I feel like... Uh, uh, what's his name who plays Vernon is, like, probably one of the... I mean, there's a lot of great castings. That was a perfect one. I mean, fucking perfect. Anyway, really that whole family's cast well, even though for whatever reason um, Dudley's supposed to be blonde and instead uh, he's like practically on, like dark brown, if not black-haired like Harry in the, in the, uh, in the movie. Um, and maybe that actor would just look weird blonde. I don't know. It's entirely possible. I mean, truthfully, I never had any problem with the way he looks in the movies. It seems to fit the character pretty well. Maybe he's even more smarmy in the movies, actually, and like a little bit less of a thug. Um, in in the in the books, like he's almost like a more jock version, like like like, you know, like if it was in the, in the United States, it would be like he was like a, a like a big football player or something. Um, American football, I mean, which is why I said in the United States. Um, but see, he, he ends up boxing. That's what it is. But but in England, for whatever the way, he still seems like he's huge. Um, but I guess he does get more muscular. But huge. Um, anyway. Um, and so everybody's freaking out. And Harry's like, no, I just meant, ple when I said the magic word, I meant please just... You know, you forgot the magic word. Please, you know that's that's all. <sighs> and so, yeah, Vernon just continues to yell at him. Um, and how dare you threaten Dudley? And he says something about the M word. You know, because again, they don't even say magic. Like they they don't even. The word will not pass their lips. Um. We get men. He he's like they will not tolerate mention of your abnormality. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we we get a lot of nice crude references to everything um, in Harry's life by the Dursleys. Dursleys. Um, And Harry's just like, okay, fine. Just fine. Fine. Sorry. Just meant please, sorry. Okay, sorry. Anyway, and so everybody kind of settles back down and Vernon's all breathing heavily and shit and uh, watching Harry closely. And uh, and so then we get a little, uh, like, summary of, like, okay, you've ever since Harry got back, shit's just sucked, basically. Um, and they've been treating him like, yeah, like he's a bomb that might go off at any minute. They, hey, look, I remembered what I read earlier. Good. Um, <laughs> and, and we get mentioned that Harry is, in fact, not normal, not a normal boy, and, and you know, as, as not normal as it is possible to be. Um, 
And yeah, so then <clears throat> our refresher course begins. You know, Harry's a wizard, and last year was his first year at Hogwarts. Um, and, you know, Harry's, uh, it's mentioned that, you know, it's obvious the Dursleys aren't happy about having him back, but he's even less happy to be back. Um, and he misses Hogwarts like, you know, you missed your, your best friend or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or something like that when they're gone or, or you broke up or, you know, but it, it's, it's the stomach ache, you know, the physical gut-wrenching longing um anyway and then we get like all the, a list of all the things that he missed because he didn't just miss hogwarts he missed the castle he missed the passageways he missed the ghosts he missed the lessons although maybe not snape um the post owls the banquets the great hall the sleeping in the four poster bed in the tower dormitory Hagrid, the forest, although really, the forest, I mean, it hasn't exactly been the most pleasant place for Harry. And, of course, especially Quidditch, because, you know, it does, I don't, I don't, some people may think Quidditch seems stupid, I think it's like, would be great if we could, if, if, if flying on, you know, I mean, maybe not brooms, but if, if flying in, in general in some kind of way like that were possible in a way that they do it, I think it'd be kind of a cool game. I don't know. Maybe it's because the seeker bit is just so strange, but I still think it's cool. Whatever. <clears throat> And it even gives us like the uh, 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 the briefest of brief summaries of what how Quidditch works. Um, we're not gonna bother with that. And then we're told that uh, all of Harry's school things, basically, including his broom and books and wand and everything, um, has all been locked in the uh, in, in it. Why does this bother me? It's such a minor, 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 minor thing. It says that it's all been locked in a cupboard, um, locked in a cupboard under the stairs. Um, no, 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 it's the cupboard under the stairs, not a cupboard under the stairs. This is where Harry used to live for like the first, almost, yeah, like 10 plus years of his life. So, how is it not the cupboard under the stairs, not a cupboard under the stairs? I mean, I'm sorry, why isn't it the instead of a? I'm, I know, I'm not the, 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 the multi-millionaire, uh, almost billionaire who donated enough money to stop being a billionaire um, author, so what the fuck do I know? But I've also read the books like a million times, and like for some reason I feel like that a that that article should be changed from a to the that's all i'm saying um <clears throat> from the perspective of harry who is the uh the person we're following around and whose emotions we are essentially taking on at m during most of the time anyway except for when we switch to that um omniscient uh pov um so yeah, all all of Harry's magic school stuff is locked up. Um, you know, of course Harry's like lamenting the idea that he might s somehow suddenly suck at Quidditch because he hadn't flown. Never mind the fact that he was like a natural flyer from the second he got on the broom, and that really Quidditch practice for Harry really doesn't make a whole lot of sense anyway because we could just practice flying around looking for the snitch. Or does, do you have, like, an extra uh, uh, non-playing player, like, person just, like, throw stuff like Wood did for him? I mean, you know, I'm just saying. It's really, there's not really, uh, there's skill involved in what Harry does in Quidditch, but there's not, um, he doesn't really play the game like the Chasers and, and, the, uh, and, the, and the Keepers do. That's, they're playing Quidditch. 
Harry is uh, a, a lookout for this one thing, and then when he sees it, he gets it usually, and then they win. The end. Um, so, yeah, like, worrying about suddenly not being good at Quidditch is kind of silly, but, eh, you know, anxiety and such. Um, I think, really, he just wishes he could fly. Which, I don't know that he'd be able to do that anyway, so it's probably better that it's locked up, because what do you, you can't fly around Privet Drive. Like, that's there's the whole statute of secrecy thing, which we'll hear more about later. Um, right, so... And it's there's mention of homework that he's not going to be able to do because his books are locked up, and I'm like... I guess this happens, but I never really understood the idea of homework over a summer holiday. It seems ridiculous. It's too long of a period. And, well, obviously at Hogwarts, you will have, like, the same teachers again. But in most, like, a lot of school situations, like, when you go to the next year, like, you have a whole different teacher, a whole different situation for, even if it's the same subject, you know? So, like, over the summer, home, of course, I mean, this is the person who thought regular homework was kind of stupid too because I always felt like if I didn't learn it in class I wasn't going to learn it at home um <laughs> which is very a very teenage way of looking at things but also kind of true um at least I, I mean I think there's some logic to it I just was really ornery about it because I, I, I knew that it, I didn't need to do it that's neither here nor there right <laughs> Do, 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 do. So anyway, yeah, not, none of all of that. Um, we get mention of what muggles are again, just so that we were, you know, we were reminded. And of course, I'm saying it the way that I'm saying it, but uh, uh, one thing that's been pointed out is that uh, she does a good job, does rolling, of... Uh, of getting exposition into the story or even the reminders without, especially the, the exposition, not so much the reminders, but without uh, making it seem too exposition-y. It, it, it's like it, it, it's blended into the context of the story in a way that makes it like make sense where it is. And it does it, it's not like she, it doesn't feel like she made an excuse to do it. It seems like the other way around, like like the story was happening and you happened to learn this information, even though clearly it's there for a reason, uh, which, I mean, to me is good writing. So, yeah. And so, yes, these, these muggles, as they are... Um, just mentioned that, that having a wizard in the family is a matter of deepest shame. <laughs> and we learned that, uh, that, that, that Uncle Vernon went an extra step and, and, and actually put a padlock on Hedwig's cage, Hedwig's cage so that, so that Harry can't, you know, get away with trying to let her out at night, which of course is what he would do. Um, and that little bit, that exchange about um, Hedwig being bored and if Harry could just let her out um, is in the movie. It just is, it's compacted into the, the scene that comes up here in a second. Um, and we get a physical description of everybody again, just in case you've forgotten that Vernon was large and necklace and had a big black mustache. Um... Which, by the way, um, uh, you know, what's his name? Again, I don't remember. But the guy who plays Vernon in the movies, um, I mean, I do know the name, I think, if I heard it, but it's been a while. Um, anyway, uh, he's more blonde, actually, in, in the movies, like a, like a going gray blonde kind of thing, I think. Um, but in the book, he's got black mustache, which makes me think his hair is dark, too, because why would you have a black mustache if you didn't have black or dark hair? Um, that would be strange, I think. Um, I can't think of an exception offhand. Uh, 
And of course, we, you know, Aunt Petunia is mentioned as being horse faced and bony, um, which is written in a way that makes it sound like she's supposed to be unattractive, but, but in fact, oftentimes people that, that would technically fit that description, not necessarily ugly. Um, just saying. And then, yeah, Dudley in the books is blonde and pink and porky. <laughs> How cute. And then the contrast of Harry being small and skinny and having jet black hair and his round glasses and his thin lightning-shaped scar, which is, you know, the whole mystery, as it were. Um, because Harry, you know, isn't really sure what's up with that scar, except that he knows that, 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 that Voldemort tried to kill him, and that's the market left. And yet somehow Voldemort lost all his powers when when he tried to kill Harry, and so Harry still doesn't really understand that mystery. Um, which is understandable. He's young, and he wasn't he was present, but he was too young to understand anything when it happened. So, And he's not old enough to have learned enough to understand why it happened either. So, yes, big mystery. And so, um, yeah, we get, like, mentioned again of who, basically, who Vernon and Petunia are. The, that's, it's Harry's um, dead mother's sister, his aunt. Um, and he spent, we mentioned that he spent 10, you know, basically his first, well, his, <laughs> from the time that he was like almost one till he was 10, um, he stayed with the Dursleys, uh, and the, you know, it's mentioned that he never really understood why he could make like odd things happen, um, you know, and we were reminded too that the Dursleys told uh, Harry that his parents died in a car crash and all that stuff. Um, and then, right, more more of the refresher course about the letter and how he went to school and he was famous and his scar was famous and now the school year is over. And, uh, and then we find out that, yes, in fact... Today is Harry's birthday, so that means it's in late July right now. Um, and it seems that they've completely ignored or and or forgotten that it's his birthday. So, I mean, he's just nil on, on today so far. Just nothing happening uh, on the birthday front, uh, which he didn't really expect much but 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 the fact that they're just like completely ignoring it apparently is like a new low like maybe in the past they would just sort of i don't know he said he it's, it's indicated that that they've done something um and they are the kind of people who will give you a petty shit gift apparently which is like an interesting characteristic um and so this year they're not saying happy birthday, neither mockingly nor seriously, um, and they're just ignoring it outright. Um, and so he's like, wow, okay, new love. And then Uncle Vernon like says, and you know, we now today we know today is a very important day, and Harry's like, wait a minute. You, wait a minute. Wait, hold up. You can't, wait a minute. <laughs> And uh, and he's like, yeah, um, this could be the day that I get the biggest deal of my career. And Harry's like, right, back to the breakfast, because this sucks. And so, yeah, of course, um, we, we learn that there's a, a dinner party planned, and that uh, <clears throat> Uncle Vernon is ho having a... a, a a super rich builder come over and his wife is coming and 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 the plan is that that Vernon's going to sort of through the use of this dinner party uh bring up the idea of 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 making a big 
sale of drills to this this builder get a big contract or whatever and that they'll be shopping for their vacation home in Mallorca um, this time tomorrow because it's going to be you know big big stuff um, and they uh, 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 they run through the schedule as it were for the whole evening like this whole thing has been planned out to uh sort of ludicrous details and this this section is in the movie um although it's been reduced to like one little round of comments like uh vernon like tells um what like well, he gets he gets like he he goes to Petunia and he asks her like what she's gonna do or where she's gonna be, because they've already they've already clearly rehearsed this more than once before this particular moment, um, and so now they're like dress rehearsal, um, or close enough to anyway, because I think this is the last time they're gonna they're gonna go through it, um. And so we know where Petunia's going to be, and where Dudley's going to be, and they're all so happy with themselves about it. Um, and then Vernon's like, and you, boy? And Harry's like, yep, going to be in my room, pretending like I don't exist. And so, which by the way is the uh, the movie verbiage in the in the book. He says, "Pretending I'm not there." I kind of like the pretending I don't exist thing better. It suits more like what they're actually getting at because it's mentioned that 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 in the in the family, the the builder family, they're the they're you won't guess they're the Masons. That's right. Builders, Masons. Hmm. 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 Right. <laughs> anyway, it's mentioned that the Masons don't know who Harry is at all, and they don't know that they even that the, the Dursleys even have a nephew. So they intend to keep it that way. And then then there's like another round of of things that are going to happen with Petunia and then Dudley and then back to Harry again and Harry is sort of essentially repeats the exact same thing I'll be in my room making a noise and pretending I'm not there or you know don't exist whatever again uh in the uh in the movie they just kind of get one round here it goes it goes twice um if not three times uh no just just Oh no! Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a third time. Yeah. Um. Da 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 da. Mallorca. Um. <laughs> he's like, I don't really think they're gonna like me any more in Mallorca than they do here. But whatever. And then we find out that Harry hasn't gotten any cards or any presents or anything, which is unusual because he made friends at Hogwarts, or at least he thought he did. And so we get a chance to sort of see that, like, uh, insecurity that, that anyone who's not been raised to feel extremely secure <laughs> would, would, would feel. So he can't, you know, right. And so Harry decides to go outside while because Vernon leaves uh, to go get dinner jackets for him and Dudley. So yeah, Harry's just sad because he's like, "Why? I thought they were my friends. Why didn't they send me cards or presents or cake or something?" Um. And so, yeah, then we finally get mentioned that it's it's Ron and Hermione specifically that he misses the most because those are, like, his best his best mates. Um, and he hasn't heard from either of them, not just on his birthday, but just in general, like, all summer, which is, you know, peculiar. And it starts to give Harry, like, this sort of, like, sense of, like, disbelief about the whole thing, like it was a, 
a, a great dream that he somehow like came out of when he when he got back to the Dursleys. Um, and we get mentioned that at one point for a while there after Harry got back from uh, from Hogwarts, he like enjoyed like saying bullshit words around uh, uh, around Dudley just to scare him. But even that sort of like lost its its appeal to him because he feels like nobody remembers him um and and nobody's talked nobody's reached out to him so he's 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 confused and lonely and sad and he misses his school um and so now ron and hermione have forgotten his birthday or so it seems And then, but it's also mentioned that um, while he does miss Hogwarts, like a stomach ache and all that good stuff, it also wasn't all like just uh, a bed of roses as far as his first year. He didn't come face to face with Voldemort again, even though he was in the back of Quirrell's head. But still, that's that's not something to just, you know, forget about over your summer holidays. Um, and Harry's outside and he's staring at the hedge and all of a sudden he like straightens up like you know immediately um, or at once maybe is a better way to say it um, And because he, he realizes that all of a sudden the hedge is staring back that a large uh, a pair of green eyes had appeared among the leaves so um Harry's like, wait a minute, whoa, 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 he jumps up, and like, um, and then right as he's like, jumping up and like, staring at the hedge, um, Dudley comes outside, and he's like, I know what day it is, and Harry's like, oh, fuck, really, right now, while well, I'm like, potentially on the verge of some sort of interesting discovery, kind of enjoying being alone right now, and here your dumbass comes. That's basically what 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 Harry says, um, and Dudley's still like, I know what day it is, and Harry's like, Good, good, good for you. So, uh, calendar studies working out for you, right? That's excellent. Um, which is 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 kind of funny because in the first book it's mentioned that you can count on Dudley to know what day of the week it is because of television, but. Anyway, that's, you know, these things happen. Um, and so, of course, Dudley's like, yeah, it's your birthday. How come you didn't get any cards? Don't have any friends at the freak place? Stuff like that is what happens. Um, and it does say freak place. By the way, that's not um, uh, a paraphrasing or an abridging. That those two words appear in the sentence that Dudley says, which is what I was talking about earlier with uh, Petunia and Lily. The use of the word "freak" as a way to uh, demean and and put down the person that 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 has like these other abilities and powers. Anyway. So, anyway, and Harry, so Harry's like, yeah, but, you know, you shouldn't be mentioning my school. You better not let your mom hear that. And, uh, and Dudley actually notices that Harry's staring at the hedge, and he's like, what, why are you staring at the hedge anyway? And, uh, Harry's like, I'm trying to decide how to burn it up with magic and Dudley like kind of freaks out a little bit and he stumbles and he looks panicked and you know he starts to stutter a little bit when he talks and that lets us know that he's really scared um and then but 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 Dudley recovers and he's like you'll get kicked out of the house and you don't have anywhere to go because you don't have any friends that'll take you, and that's 
that's hitting a little too close to home for Harry as far as like how he feels about the whole situation right now. So of course he's like starts saying gibberish words and stuff. Mind you, he has no wand, but Dudley doesn't know what he can and can't do at all. So Dudley freaks out and starts screaming for his mummy. And Harry gets in trouble, um, even though it's obvious that he didn't actually do magic. <clears throat> he still gets in trouble for saying it and for taunting Dudley, basically. And so, uh, yeah, Harry ends up doing like a, a, a shit ton of chores. Like he cleans windows, he washes a car, he mows the lawn, he trims flower beds, he prunes and waters roses. And he repaint, repaints a garden bench. Like, how you do that all in one afternoon while Vernon's out buying jackets is beyond me. But whatever, he does all those things. Um, and it's hot. It's summer. Uh, and that's kind of mentioned, too. Um, <clears throat> and he knows that he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have uh, given in to Dudley's taunting. But the problem is that the things Dudley was saying are the things that he's been fearing in the first place, that he doesn't have any friends and that nobody really remembers or cares about him. And that's, you know, and that everything basically doesn't matter everything that happened the pre previous year either wasn't real or or wasn't what he thought it was or something you know he's just the self-doubt is strong with this one right now basically and Finally, he gets done with all his chores. Which, by the way, he still had he had to spread manure on the flower beds. How nice! How beautiful! Um, and finally, like when it's like uh, seven thirty in the evening, he uh, he Petunia finally calls him in. So I mean, he's been at it all day. I, again, I don't even really know how. Well, I guess. Anyway, right. So he comes in and he sees the the uh, the pudding or the dessert, as it were, um, in America, in America, um, on top of the fridge, and it's mentioned that it's a huge mound of whipped cream and sugared violets. Um, and <clears throat> there's also mentioned that there's really like this really delicious pork roast uh, in the in the oven that's sizzling, but. The uh, the supper that's been laid for Harry is not that. It's two slices of bread and a lump of cheese, which is like, uh. nonetheless, Harry's for the most part just happy to be inside in the cool after being out in the sun, like basically like getting his indentured servitude on all day. So anyway, so she. Blah, 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 blah. Petunia rushes him, and he finally, uh, you know, he eats quickly. And she runs him up the stairs, and just as he's getting up there, the uh, the doorbell's ringing, so the party's just about to start. And, uh, and Vernon gives him, like, the final warning, like he sticks his head up the stairs right before he goes to answer the door, um, which actually Dudley's going to answer the door, so there's that. Um... And he's like, remember, boy, one sound. And, uh, <laughs> one sound. Harry's bedroom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and so Harry goes to his room, and he slips inside, and he closes the door, and he turns to collapse on his bed. Except there's already someone sitting on it. Dun dun dun! Yeah. Chapter one, not the longest chapter, but the worst birthday. Um, and we still managed to make this about an hour. How about that? That's um. Well, you be the judge of that, I suppose. But uh, anyway. Um, that's what, uh, let's see, what else, uh, about the movie, let me think about it for a second, 
so yeah the movie like it really like this whole thing is takes place in just no time because like there's a lot of the stuff like the breakfast scene doesn't happen in the movie so we like we kind of move from harry uh being in his room looking at the picture book to getting called downstairs by Aunt Petunia. So none of the stuff outside happens. He doesn't see any eyes in the hedge. Like, none of those things occur. Um, he comes downstairs. It's not morning. It's not breakfast. It's, like, just before the dinner party and that whole little rehearsal thing, but a shortened uh, version of that. And then... And then Harry goes upstairs, and the next chapter happens. Um... So yeah, that's that's this episode and this chapter done. Um, we shall return as soon as is reasonably possible for uh, chapter two and 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 go from there. Cause that's what we're doing. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, again, remember the commenting is nice. I like to hear from you. Uh, if you've got things, questions, comments, corrections, whatever, I'll take it all. Um, and, uh, you know, the likes are kind of cool too. I won't lie. You know, my, my, it, it's, yeah, I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, that's, uh, that's everything. I think, uh, that, that, that covers it all. And, uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.